So we'll develop here the flexure formula in the case of simple bending with the assumptions that we have already done in the last video. For this one, we'll consider here one simply supported beam and let fix our axis system at point A. Horizontal axis we'll call it as X and the vertical axis is represented by Y. We have support is given at A and support is given at B. Now this time there is no loading is acting. So the beam is straight and is horizontal on the two support. Suppose the beam is subjected to a vertical load is equal to F, UDL is equal to W, one couple is equal to C. In that case, because of this loading, the beam will bend. That is, it will go into flex. So we will show here a slight curvature for the given beam, which was initially horizontal when there is no loading. So beam will going to respond to this external load because of which it will going to flex. So the bending moment produced here may be the positive or negative. If we have a smiley face like this one, then the bending moment is taken as positive value. Otherwise for hogging, that is this case, we have bending moment is negative. So we'll assume here the case of positive bending that is the sagging case. So this one is the case of sagging, which one is a positive bending. Since our set of our axis system at A, so we have at A x is equal to 0 and we have a bending moment at any distance x will be given as the moment which one is a function of x and we'll assume here this one is expressed in the form of x and is a positive value. So the same distance if I show when there is no loading in that case you will find here if we consider this section here at a distance equal to x and this thickness will be same as equal to dx. So this transverse line here are exactly vertical but if you make it a curvature here so these lines will be slightly get curved. That is the section which was initially vertical is now you will observe like this one. So this one is a, our new section after you load it by the loading given here. So if I extend these lines here I will get here these lines will be extended to certain point that will be called as center of curvature. So we'll just use this figure here and we'll enlarge this figure. So we have considered here one thin slice of the beam and we'll develop the figure for this thin slice when it is loaded. If there is no loading and if I extend these lines of a slice then they will never meet. But if we have a loading here then we get here the same slice is edges are slightly inclined and will meet at a point that point is called as the center of curvature. So this point here is called as the center of curvature. So we slightly exaggerate this figure and we'll develop the figure here. This one is representing the top surface and this one is representing the bottom surface. So this tiny slide here is exaggerated and is shown here. What you observe here in this case that we have the top fiber and the bottom fiber that is the top surface and bottom fiber. As far as the initial condition is considered here, that is there is no loading, then both the top fiber and the bottom fiber are of same length. But when it was loaded and there is a positive bending moment is produced or negative bending moment is produced, then there is a change in the length of the top surface and the bottom surface. Our observation is that the top surface length has been decreased and the bottom surface length has been increased. So same area, if I show like this, that is this is our slice and the edges are vertical that is same length equal to dx then we have developed the slice here so we have curvature is takes place so this one is shown as a curvature surface this one is a new length of a top fiber and this one is a new length of the bottom fiber so our observation is that the top fiber length has been decreased and the bottom fiber length has been increased so initially all the fibers here are of the same length but when we have a bending is done, then the top fiber length has been decreased and the bottom fiber length has been increased. So the top fiber is become a shorter here. The bottom fiber is a longer. It means that somewhere in between the top fiber and bottom fiber, we have a same original length that equal to dx. So some fiber has no effect of the loading and they have the same length as the original length here. It means that somewhere there is no change in the original length of the given slice. Let's suppose here that I have this fiber where we have the original length of the fiber before we are loading. And the location of this 
fiber from the top fiber and the bottom fiber is a function of the cross section area and we can show here that this fiber is exactly passing through the centroid of the given cross section we are going to prove it that uh, this section here where the, there is no change in the length that is a neutral fiber we can call this so this neutral fiber will pass through the centroid of the given cross section so here i will show you the exact cross section cross section can be any either it can be rectangle or it can be square or it can be t or it can be i shape section since i have shown you the neutral axis distance is smaller from the bottom fiber and is a larger distance from the top fiber so i assume here that a section is a trapezoid so right now we assume here the cross section of this beam which is perpendicular to the z axis is a trapezoid so this fiber is a top fiber where we observe that a change in the top fiber length and top fiber becomes shorter here we have a bottom fiber and we observe here is that due to the loading here the bottom fiber is becoming longer so somewhere we can show here a neutral fiber so mathematically it can be proved here that a neutral surface will be exactly passing through that fiber which is passing through the centroid of the given section this time we have a trapezoid so let represent here the c or g as a centroid then this horizontal line passing through the centroid will be labeled as a neutral axis so why it is labeled as a neutral axis because for this fiber there is no change in the length and therefore it is called as neutral neutral means that which does not take part in the effect of the bending whereas the top fiber and the bottom fiber there is a definite change in the length so i will introduce here one variable that is called as radius of curvature which is to be measured from the center of curvature up to the neutral surface so let use the symbol here rho and this rho represents here the radius of curvature and in the cross section we set up our axis system exactly at centroid our horizontal axis is x and the vertical axis is y in a vertically upward direction we will take the value of y positive and below it we will take it negative the radial distance of a neutral surface from the center of curvature is rho is the radius of curvature and the radius of curvature is that where the fibers are not getting any longer or any shorter but they have the original length equal to l now we will consider here a fiber at a distance equal to y from the neutral axis let represent this in the cross section so we are interested in this fiber and this fiber from the centroid or from the neutral axis at a distance equal to y so let mark the distance here of the given fiber of interest from the neutral axis at a distance equal to y at the same fiber we can show in the slice also so in the slice here we'll mark the same fiber at a distance equal to y from the neutral surface so this one is our surface that we are interested to know what is the change in the length at any distance y from the neutral axis or from the neutral surface so this total value of the center of curvature up to neutral axis is equal to rho and the fiber at distance equal to y from the neutral surface it means that from the center of curvature this fiber which is of interest is at a radius equal to rho minus y now we are ready to develop the equation for a normal strain here along the x direction and we assume here that the length of the neutral surface will be equal to l so there is no change in the length so original length will be same as equal to l so let mark here the length of the neutral surface let's say this is original length and the via original length is same as equal to l and this neutral surface is passing through the centroid whereas the this fiber which is distance equal to y let's say this length will be equal to l prime so this total length will be equal to l prime and from the center of curvature here we have radius of curvature for this fiber which is the length equal to l prime will become rho minus y so it's radius of curvature is rho minus y so we can very well compute here what is the length of this fiber l prime if we know this angle is equal to theta so let assume here this angle theta this angle theta is same for all the fiber top fiber bottom fiber or the neutral fiber or any fiber in the given cross section only the radius of curvature will change radius of curvature for top fiber is a smaller value bottom fiber is a larger value 
that is more than the value of rho and top fiber is less than the value of rho at neutral exactly this value is equal to rho so we can very well compute here using the arc length concept that is the product of the radius multiplied by angle theta in radian we can calculate here the, the length l so let me label these fibers here let's say this fiber is a b fiber at a distance equal to y from the centroid or from the neutral axis this fiber is CD fiber, which means our neutral surface itself. E to F is our top fiber. And the bottom fiber will represent as HI. So all these fiber length AB, CD, EF, HI, we can calculate using the concept of arc length. Arc length is same as theta. That is the angle theta, which is substrand and is common to all the fibers. And R represents here in general the radius but theta you have to compulsory take as a radian value. So the fiber CD here has no change in the length. So we have length of CD is same as equal to L is the original length. And this length L we can calculate using the definition of arc length as theta multiplied by R. Now for this neutral surface we have radius of curvature is rho. It means that we have length of the original fiber L will be same as equal to the radius of curvature equal to rho multiplied by the angle substrandate that equal to theta. Theta is in radian. Similarly, we can calculate here the new fiber length AB which is distance equal to y where we call the length equal to L prime. So we have length of fiber AB that will be labeled as L prime is the new length. And we can calculate the value of L prime again by using the same formula that is the arc length. But this fiber AB from the center of curvature at a radial distance equal to rho minus y. So L prime will be same as rho minus y that is the radial distance and we have a same angle substrated that equal to theta and again you have to take the value of theta is in radian. Here we'll define the normal strain along the x direction and it is defined as the change in length upon the original length. Normal strain we can represent by epsilon and this along the x direction so we use the symbol epsilon x. We have change in length is represented by delta L and we have original length equal to L. The change in length is same as the new length minus original length and the original length will be same as equal to L so we can solve for epsilon x. So in this case, we have epsilon x will be same as equal to the change in length. Change in length equal to new length that equal to AB. Original length is of same fiber that is of CD. So length of CD divided by the original fiber is CD. That is the length of CD. So we can substitute this value here and we can solve for normal strain. So in this case, I get a normal strain will be equal to length of AB. Length of AB is a product of rho minus y multiplied by theta. So we'll expand this term and I will write the expansion term as a rho multiplied by theta minus y multiplied by theta. And again, we have minus the length of CD that equal to rho multiplied by theta is divided by the length CD. Length CD is same as equal to rho multiplied by theta. Now, as far as the numerator is considered, we have rho into theta and minus rho into theta. So positive rho theta and the negative rho theta will cancel out. So we have a normal strain along the x direction is simply equal to y theta divided by rho theta. So again, theta is cancelled and we get this value of normal strain along the x direction as y divided by the radius of curvature rho. But y is the any fiber I have taken from the neutral axis. So this one is the generalized expression of a normal strain. So we can claim here that this one is the function of y and as the value of y will change, the strain will also change. And negative value indicate that the strain is negative, that is a compressive strain if we move above the centroidal axis in the positive of y direction, y is positive. So this will guarantee the compressive strain. Therefore, the top fiber is a shorter fiber and if we go to the negative of the y axis then the y will be negative 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 become positive and we have positive value of epsilon x it means that the bottom fiber is longer now since the strain is changing here with respect to the distance y which is measured from the neutral axis 
we can claim here that the normal strain along the x direction is a function of y. So we write in this fashion, we have normal strain along the x is the function of y and is given as minus y divided by rho. So this is a generalized expression you can use to find out the normal strain along the x direction which is a function of y. Let call this is equation number 1. And its strong function of y and the value of rho will remain constant here. That is the radius of curvature of a neutral surface is same as equal to rho. It means that the normal strain is directly proportional to y. And its value of a normal strain at y is equal to 0. That is on the neutral surface the value will be 0. And hence there is no change on the neutral surface. But if you move above this one, the value of y will be positive as seen in the cross section of the beam here. Top fiber is the largest possible distance here as compared to the bottom fiber because we have selected here the section is such that the centroid is towards the bottom fiber. So naturally this value is a maximum value for the top fiber. So we have a normal strain x which is a function of y is given as minus y divided by rho. Clearly from this equation we conclude here the normal strain is directly proportional to the distance y. And what we observe here is that the top fiber distance from the neutral axis is a larger distance as compared to the bottom fiber from the neutral axis. But if this section is inverted like this one which is the same trapezoid then we have neutral axis is at this point. And what we observe here is that the top fiber from the centroid is nearer and the bottom fiber is away from the centroid. So we want to make here generalized length between the neutral axis and the top and bottom fiber. So we'll mark here the two distances measured from the neutral axis to the top fiber and from the neutral axis to the bottom fiber. So, so in this situation we'll consider here the larger of the distance between the top fiber and the neutral axis and we represent here a variable c. So if we have a trapezoid where the top of the trapezoid is the smaller and the bottom is the larger in that case, the distance between the neutral axis and the top fiber is represented as C. So C is the maximum distance between the neutral axis, top fiber and the bottom fiber. If this trapezoid is inverted, then we will take the maximum distance here equal to C. So C is here always a larger distance. So you have to always select the C as a larger distance of the two length between the neutral axis and the top fiber and the neutral axis and the bottom fiber. So that is we called as C. So if I substitute here y is equal to C, in that case I will get the maximum value of the normal strain. So it can be positive or it can be negative like in this case the value of C is taken as positive and here the value of C will be taken as negative. So this value can be either positive value or negative value and we have maximum value of Y is equal to C. So I will introduce here one more term that is called as the maximum strain which are represent here by epsilon and the suffix is max. And this one is the absolute value of epsilon X which is a function of Y. So just replace here y and rho will be as it is and you have to always take this one as an absolute value. So we have minus of c divided by rho where rho is the radius of curvature. So as far as this section is considered we have maximum strain will be positive and as far as this section is considered the top fiber has the largest possible distance so maximum strain will be negative. So in this fashion we introduce the term here as a epsilon max that is called as the maximum normal strain. So in general we have maximum strain is represented by epsilon max and absolute sign here. So we'll write this value is equal to C by rho. Let's call this one is equation number 2. So up till now we have developed the normal strain is a function of y and the expression for maximum strain. So from epsilon maximum, that is the maximum normal strain we can solve for rho. So anytime we have radius of curvature is given as C times is maximum strain that equal to epsilon max. Let call equation number 3. And this value of rho will put back in equation 1. So we can calculate here in general the expression for normal strain x which one is a function of y. 
So we'll put here equation 3 in 1 and we get expression for the normal strain along the x direction which one is a function of y is equal to minus y and rho here will be replaced as c multiplied by the maximum strain along the x direction. Rearranging this equation we are the normal strain along the x direction which one is a function of y will be same as equal to the maximum strain along the x direction and is multiplied by minus y divided by c. Now what is c here? c is the larger distance of the neutral axis either from the top fiber or the bottom fiber. So remember the c. c is nothing but a larger of y distance from the neutral axis of either from the top fiber or for bottom fiber. If it is a rectangular cross section then it exactly d by 2 that is a depth divided by 2. But for unsymmetrical section you have to always use the value of c. So this is how we have developed the expression for normal strain. In the next video we will develop the equation for the bending stress and the moment that is the moment of resistance. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.